often when we think of Mahler, we think of huge, sprawling symphonies. We think of kind of the symphony pushed to the limits of its, of its architectural capacity for containing musical material. And I think the interesting kind of exception to this, really, is Mahler's Fourth Symphony. It's the most classical of Mahler's symphonies. It's also, uh, the, in terms of the orchestral forces used, it's the smallest orchestra Mahler used. And I think it's geared toward the ultimate sort of underlying influence of the piece. And that is that it's the last of Mahler's set of what were referred to as Wunderhorn symphonies. Mahler used songs of this wonderful Clemens Brentano and Achim von Arnim set of uh, early 19th century collection of German folk poetry. In the fourth symphony, uh, this text is interesting because there's a counterpart in the collection of songs called The Earthly Life. The finale of the fourth symphony is The Heavenly Life, The Child's Vision of Heaven, and The Earthly Life is, is its counterpart, The Child's Vision of Suffering on Earth. And so what you get in this finale is a soprano soloist, uh, in this case uh, a young woman named Lisa Milne who'd been making her Philharmonic debut, uh, performing this wonderful, very innocent text about what heaven might be like. There's bountiful food, there are games, the saints lead the children around. It's, it's, it's very sweet. And it ultimately ends with a very kind of serene and peaceful uh, musical evocation of this atmosphere. It's, 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 you know, Mahler, again, kind of surprising everyone that, that a symphony could end so softly and quietly and, and with such kind of purity and innocence. Uh, this is something I think that, that is, is very powerful about Mahler as a composer.